bound is below away from zero. And there are two possible situations. The, or either the curvature stays bounded along the flow, either the curvature is unbounded. I want to discuss today the two situations and what you can say. So the first situation I want to discuss is the fact. So the collapse with bounded curvature, and already yesterday I told you that this can happen only when uh, a single curve, isolated curve, collapses down. Because actually, if you have a collapse with bounded curvature, you can imagine that uh, you cannot have a collapse of a region because there is some curvature where a region can collapse only if it has less than six edges, five edges. And if you consider a region with five edges, we have four, five at most, five angles of 120 degrees. And uh, if you consider straight segments between these uh, angles, these corners, actually there is not enough curvature to, to close. So with f only five angles of 120 <coughs> degrees, you need some curvature in your region in order to close. With six, you can do it. You can have straight hexagon, but less than six. So your region, in order to, to collapse, has to have at most five edges, so there is some curvature around, and you can imagine then when a region collapses, the curvature must go to plus infinity. It cannot stay bounded. This is absolutely a non-elementary lemma in general. And actually, in general, we don't have a proof of this outside the uh, world of moving networks. If you find the proof of this, a bound from below on the area for regions with <coughs> five angles and uh, at, of 120 degrees and the curvature bounded above, I would be very interested to, to know it, the proof of this. But, uh, well, in the case of networks, you are in a very special situation, you can prove that. So if a region is collapsing, the curvature is going to plus infinity, so it's the other case that I'm going to discuss. So in this case, one region cannot so collapse, and by the argument that I showed you yesterday, that means that only an isolated single curve of your network is collapsing down, not other closed curve, which doesn't mean that only a single curve. It could be that at the same time, in different points, in different areas of your network, some curves are collapsing at the same time. But locally, only one single curve. And uh, so the analysis is understanding what you get when you send your time t to big T, and what you get as a limit some kind of limit network in order to reapply possibly one of the theorems, or possibly one of the short time existence theorems that we saw at the very first lecture. In particular, the theorem, the very general theorem of Ilman and Neves and Schulze, in order to restart your flow. Okay, now what happens is that actually, possibly reparameterizing, all the curves, but it is possible to show, proportional to arc length, actually, it's possible to show that the bound on the curvature implies some convergence in double uh, two infinity and in C1 to some limit network S big T, as T goes to big T. Let me, and the very important thing is that this convergence gives you it's not up to a sequence. All the sequence of networks converge to a unique limit network, actually. And uh, moreover, even if the, com I'm not saying, um, <coughs> well, sorry, this is, okay. So, sorry, I made a mistake here. So the W2 infinity convergence uh, is uh, weak while the W, the C1 convergence is strong. So the convergence is strong in C1 and weak in W2 infinity to this limit network. So you only have, that. The, well, you still have the, the curves are of class W2 infinity, so not necessarily C2 for sight, but at least they have uh, bounded curvature in a distribution, from a distributional point of view. 
over, what happens is actually that ST is non regular. Since uh, a single curve is uh, vanishing, you can imagine that the situation is that two triple junctions are going to collide along this triple curve, this, uh, this vanishing curve. And what you get in the end, since uh, only this curve is vanishing by the argument of yesterday, what you get at the end is a four point. Before showing some, uh, something related to this, let me try to convince you that, well, give you another idea of estimates that you need, different by the previous ones. Actually, several of the things that I said uh, easily hide a lot of estimates behind that, actually. I'll just give you a, a taste of the, another estimate in order to get this. As you can remember, we all we always working with this. Which means that lambda is equal to the third power. And this uh, explicit expression of a tangential part of the velocity of the motion actually allows to write down an evolution equation for lambda, which is the following. This lambda evolves like uh, t derivative is equal to lambda ss minus lambda lambda s minus 2 k ks plus lambda k square. And let me recall also the evolution equation for k, which is k s s plus k s lambda plus k cube. So I want to convince you that uh, actually you have uh, a unique limit. So the what follows by this guy, with these two equations, that if you consider this guy here and call it V, it's the velocity at every point of the motion, I want to write down an equation for the square of the velocity. So I have actually the velocity, since these two guys are orthonormal, it's uh, the square of the velocity is simply the square of k plus the square of lambda. And now I use these two. When I derive this, I get 2 lambda times all this stuff. Let me write it explicitly. Lambda ss minus 2 lambda square lambda s minus 2 lambda k ks plus lambda square k square. Then I derive k square. Uh, sorry, here is a 4. And here is a 2. Now I derive k square. So what I have is plus 2k kss plus 2k ks lambda plus k to the fourth power, two. And now you see that there are <coughs> similar terms around. 
this one is like this one. So I can throw away this and put minus two here. And now I want to rewrite all this guy in terms of V, actually. So what I can, I deal with these two together. So these are equal to lambda square plus k square ss minus two times lambda, uh, lambda s square minus two times ks square by simply taking derivatives. And uh, okay, now I'm looking at, uh, I use uh, this guy here, minus two, and uh, this guy here. Two together, if I collect lambda, this is equal to minus two lambda, lambda, lambda s plus k, ks, which is equal to minus two, well, minus lambda, lambda square plus k square, S. And finally, if I take one and two, I collect the k square. That is plus two times k square lambda square plus k square. And now you see that uh, our v, v square, is equal to lambda square plus a square appears here. Here, minus lambda v square s plus two k square v square minus squares. So throwing away these two, I can write smaller or equal than this guy here. So I wrote down a partial differential inequality for v square. That actually works very well for maximum principle, if you can use maximum principle, because at the maximum point of v square, this guy is non-positive. This guy is zero if the maximum of v square is in the interior. And what you find out that simply the time derivative of the maximum of v square is smaller than two times k square v square maximum. <clears throat> and in our case, the curvature is bounded. So this guy here is a constant. It can be bounded by a constant. So this is bounded by a constant times v square max, which means that uh, if you can use maximum principle on this equation, v square can only have exponential growth. In particular, in finite time, it cannot go to plus infinity. It, you can bound v square at some time, at every positive time, by the, its value at time zero. And if you bound v square, you are actually able to bound lambda square. So a bound from k, on k gives you a bound on lambda also, in particular on the velocity of the motion. All of these, if, you're, if you can use maximum principle on this equation, which means if the maximum of v square is in the interior, not at the triple junction. Okay, but at what happens at triple junction? At triple junction, we know from very beginning computation, computation at the beginning, that the sum of the curvature square are equal are exactly equal to the sum of the lambda square at every triple junction. And now you know again that your curvature is bounded, which means that at the triple junction all also the tangential velocity, the tangential part of velocity is bounded. So at the triple junction, you have your estimate that under the assumption that the curvature is bounded, also the tangential part of velocity is bounded. 
by some constant which is more or less the same that bounds the curvature. So either during the flow, inside the curve, the tangential part of the velocity is still bounded by this constant, the same constant which bounds the tangential velocity at the boundary. Either if it is larger than that, then the maximum must, get, must uh, fall in the inside. And then you can use maximum principle. Because when you have this, you also have that uh, v square at the triple junction is bounded by two times uh, the maximum of the curve, well, by some constant, the maximum of the curvature square, which is actually bounded by another constant by hypothesis. So v either v square is bounded by its value at the boundary of the curve, which is already bound, uniformly bounded. Otherwise, you use maximum principle in the interior on this equation to say that uh, it cannot grow too much. And so you get a uniform estimate on V, and then also on lambda. So bounds on the curvature implies bounds also on the tangential velocity, which is very good. Let me underline only for this flow for this special flow, that actually it's, we can always put ourselves in this situation. So we have this bound on the velocity, and then I look at these guys, I take one curve, and the curve, one point on this curve, gamma i of x and t, and I look at the difference between gamma i of x and s, so I look at the where at different times, this curve, the, the, this point is mapped by the curve, and this difference is actually equal to the integral between s and t, let's take t larger than s, s and t, of delta gamma, delta t, and x, xi, the xi. This is simply deriving integrating. But we know that this guy here, is exactly the velocity of the motion. It's exactly our V by the equation over there. So this is equal. Let me do carry the modulus inside of the integral. So this is equal then the integral between S and T of the modulus of the integrand, which is actually the modulus of V at X, C, the X, C. But we, we just derived the bound on V depending on the curvature, so this is smaller than a constant times t minus s. And the constant is independent of time. Actually, we did it for the generic x, and x doesn't appear here, so actually this is, you can also write that the uniform norm between the same curve at two different times is bounded by a constant times the difference in time. So then it's easy to see that uh, this implies the curve, the, the map gamma i indexed by the time, for time going to big T, it's a Cauchy sequence in the C0 of uh, 0, 1 as T goes to T. So, it's a, so you have a limit a unique limit, actually, of the curve gamma i that we can, can call gamma big T from 0, 1 to R2, which is our candidate limit network. Unique. There is only one limit because it's of this fact that it's a Cauchy sequence in time, indexed by time. This is only continuous map. But then, reparameterizing in arc length and uh, using the bound and the curvature, what you conclude is that possibly not exactly this map, but the, what you see in the limit, the support of the network in the limit, it's actually, a, well, it's actually something which is parameterized in C1 with, bound, with bounded curvature, and uh, it can be unique. The limit is unique. There is only one limit network 
in doing, in doing this, uh, this convergence. So we have a limit network at big T. Uniquely network, it's a bounded curve, this emotionally bounded curvature. Actually, with some effort, you can prove that actually far from, from the possible multiple junction, the curves are not only uh, W to infinity, they are actually C infinity, and far from the triple junction, the convergence is also C infinity. That's kind of regularity theorem that follows by several estimates, for instance, by interior estimates of uh, Hecker Wisken. So actually what you conclude is that you get some unique limit big S big T. and W2 infinity weak to some S big T, which is actually a C2 network. Because if you are C2 with bounded second derivative outside of a point, then you are C2 up to the point, actually. And uh, what's happening here, that S of T from the geometric consideration is something like this, with this curve is going to collapse. So when t goes to big T, what you see, these other curves are not collapsing, they are all converging C1, actually, that you find a four point, and actually, you can expect that it could happen something like this, for instance, 40 and uh, 80, 120, since the C1 convergence forget this part, these two curves, must converge to something that forms an angle of 120 degrees, like here, and also the other one, so other two here. So this, a priori, could be possible, but actually you can exclude this possibility where these two angles are differently by 60 degrees, because in a way, in order to do this, there must be some curvature here on this curve that can, is in a way concentrating and uh, concentrating at this point, making in a way some kind of turn in the, in the collapsing. But concentration of curvature means that uh, the curvature is concentrating in a small uh, length of this curve but going to plus infinity. But here it is not a situation. It, yeah, we assume that the curvature is bounded. So actually what can be proved is that uh, when, you, when this curve collapses, what you see at the end are two curves like that when with uh, 120 degrees between them and uh, exactly 60 degrees in the other angles. So a single situation. So all this stuff force uh, to have a limit ST network forming a four point here actually, not any kind of four point, exactly with these angles, 120, 120, 60, 60, which is exactly what we saw in the simulation. Possibly well, I didn't underline too much the very first day that I showed you the simulation. But when there is a collapse of a single curve, the angles behave like this actually. We can re-see the simulation maybe tomorrow at the end to show you again the, the, the video. So this is a theorem under multiplicity one conjecture that we use several times. What we get in ST are, it's a, a network with triple junction, triple junction where nothing happens, stays triple junction, regular triple junction with 120 degrees, and some for every isolated curve like this, which collapse, you get one of these four points with this angle condition. And uh, as I said, it's exactly what we saw in the simulation. This is a better drawing. I'm not very good. 
a tenth, but this is better, thanks to Alessandra Pruda. Okay, just a remark, this analysis can be extended also if you have one boundary curve, boundary arriving at an end point of your network. If this curve is uh, collapsing, actually, instead of an inner curve, what you get in the limit, it's uh, two curves arriving at the point P, forming between them an angle again of 120 degrees, which is exactly what we saw when I showed you the example of the spoon and the curve connecting the spoon to the boundary collapses. And if you remember, in the end, you had, we got something like this, with these two angles of 120 degrees, with this angle of 120 degrees. This is exactly an example of this situation of the boundary. And actually, if you get this, depending on the, what kind of uh, physical or uh, problem you are trying to modelize, you have to ask yourself uh, what you want to do with this guy when a curve on the boundary vanish actually. How to restart these guys? Well, actually, all the theorems that we developed worked only, as I underlined, only for regular networks with triple junctions. So if you get a four point, you absolutely need the short time existence of Hillman and Neves and Schultz in order to, which is a more geometric measure theory based. Okay, now I want to consider very special networks, three like, so there are no loops around. They're simply a graph, so you don't have any closed loop. And uh, what can be shown is that if you work, if you consider a network which is a tree, and uh, one of the simplest one can be something like this, with four points on the boundary, and two triple junction. Um, two. Is one of the simplest. Well, actually, what uh, what can be proved is that if you look at this guy, well, it can happen that this curve here collapse and we are in the same situation here. And this, in a way, is some kind of converse of the previous theorem. If you are a tree, well, whatever, the curvature cannot uh, go, cannot be unbounded. Actually, the curvature is always bounded during the flow. But then, if you know that the, if your curvature is bounded, then you are in the first situation, so the only possibility of singularity is a single isolated curve collapsing down and doing, again, exactly this phenomenon here. So it's a kind of if and only if, if you are dealing with a, if, if you are dealing with a tree, Actually, this is the only possible singularities that you can that you can uh, you can see during the flow. Before discussing some consequences, just to give you a hint why this works. Well, actually, <clears throat> the idea is similar to what I just mentioned yesterday about the evolution of a single, uh, single triad, actually, that uh, in a way, if you control the curvature 
far, not so far, but the triple junction, actually you are able to control not the curvature, but the growth of the curvature close to the triple junction. And sometimes uh, you control so good uh, if a three of these uh, straight enough, flat enough, that they cannot go to plus infinity fast enough in order to produce a singularity. So actually the proof involves several estimates, but the idea is that uh, if you consider this guy, a tree, and uh, you take as usual, choose a point x naught as before, and take a blow up with the standard rescaling dynamic, uh, whisking and dynamical rescaling, take a blow up and get the limit shrinker as before, blow up of a tree. Well, taking a blow up is like taking a limit and you can, I think you can guess that if you take a limit of something which is a tree, you still have a tree because you cannot produce new regions. You cannot produce loops. Also, because of the multiplicity one con conjecture forbids the possibility that you, the network touch itself and produce, uh, and produce a closed loop. So limit of trees is a tree. Is a tree. So the limit shrinker that comes out uh, from a blow up in the, in the situation of a tree is a tree. And then uh, you can work out a lemma that tells you that uh, a shrinker, which is a tree, must be actually only, it's, a, it's an absolutely non-elementary lemma that uh, if a shrinker is a tree, then uh, it must be composed only by half lines. That actually, as we said to yesterday, since an half line has unbounded length, it must be passing, must be, must be passing for the origin. So uh, composed by half line for the origin. So one only possibilities are guys like this for the origin. But actually we are dealing, locally dealing with a situation like this because also in this situation, isolated curves, there are no region that can collapse. So we are in the other situation. Only curves can collapse and they must be isolated, otherwise multiplicity one conjecture is false. So locally you have a collapse of an isolated curve. So locally you are in this situation, always. So if you locally you are in this situation, and you take a blow up of things like this, well, you have very few possibilities. Actually, you can, you can have at most four half lines. So at most, you find something which is composed by four half lines. Moreover, the fact, uh, well, the fact that uh, the convergence is in C1 tells you that you must have 120 degrees, 120 degrees here and here, and again, <coughs> there is another lemma that tells you that uh, at the end, again, you can only have this situation, 120, 120, 60, and 60. So the only possibility when you have a three are the old ones, so single line, empty set, single line, triple uh, infinite flat triad, more this guy extra. So for a tree, without assumption on the curvature, you only have an extra guy because of the topological structure that forces the shrinker to, uh, to have this structure. You only have an extra case to deal with in, this, in the argument that I used to yesterday. So again, you put yourself in a, in a 
you take this guy, is this curve here is, uh, is vanishing, you put yourself close and close to the point of vanishing, what you see is that your guy is getting close to this, so which means that even enlarging, you are getting very close to straight lines here. And again, you use a similar argument to the one we used for the triode in order to say that uh, at some point you are too flat here, there is not enough curvature in order that the curvature which is inside here goes to plus infinity fast enough. And you use a very similar argument to the one that I roughly presented yesterday that, uh, okay, the curvature inside here can make uh, uh, well, can go to plus infinity, but it took too much time. At the end, you find out an estimate that tells you that the curvature is going to plus infinity after some interval, but this interval is larger than the interval given by big T, the time of singularity. So you conclude that the curvature at big T is not going to plus infinity. And again, as yesterday, as a heuristic principle, yesterday I said, when you find out a blow up which is flat, there is no singularity, the curvature is bounded. And also in this case, we are adding to the, the old list another possible blow up which is actually flat. So it's natural to expect, and actually it is like that, that your curvature cannot go to plus infinity. And in fact, in this situation, by this argument, at the end you conclude that the curvature is bounded in the situation of a tree where some curve is collapsing down. This is more or less, it's very rough, but uh, otherwise I will spend a lot of time in showing the, the technicalities of this. But this is more or less the idea. The moral idea is that if you get a flat blow up, curvature is bounded. What are the consequences of this? Well, a very first consequence is that what yesterday I called type zero singularities actually exist. Singularities without, with the bounded curvature. That actually, you can also imagine that possibly they cannot exist. Because uh, if you consider a very long rectangle, well, the minimal connection between the four points here it's not so difficult to show that it's given by this guy, 120 here, 120, and a long line in the middle. So now suppose, change the color, that instead our initial network is done like this. Let's make it regular. So if the angles are here are 120, 120. And run the evolution for this network. Okay, as I said yesterday, if the evolution doesn't develop any singularities, you expect, and that's true, that you converge asymptotically to the minimal connection between the fixed endpoints. So if you don't have any singularity, of this uh, uh, pink network, you should get, you should converge to this guy here, but that's clearly impossible because they have a different topology in a way, different structure. They are not equivalent. If instead, so at some point a singularity must happen. And when it happens, since uh, this guy is a graph, by this theorem, must be this way. The curvature must be bounded, so there must be one curve collapsing. And so, and if you make it symmetric, actually this curve must be the collapsing one. Because if you make it symmetric on one side and the other side, it's not possible this curve collapses because otherwise also this other one collapses. So the only collapsing must happen on this curve, forming a four point like this with bounded curvature because of the theorem. And 
the restarting by means of uh, uh, Ilman and Neve Schultz theorem produce something which will be something like this. And asymptotically, you get the minimal connection. But the point is that this must happen. And this is a type of zero singularity. So you rigorously prove after this theorem that type zero singularity must ha really happen in some situations. Let me also say that all this can be localized, which means that uh, the theorem can be localized. So an easy corollary is that if the network is locally a tree, maybe over here there is some regions, but locally a tree means that uniformly in time in that neighborhood, the network is always a tree. Then you can use the theorem that says that whatever happens inside here, inside this, your network, even if you find a singularity, the curvature is still bounded. So where the network is a tree in this area, even if it is not a tree globally, the curvature is there in that neighborhood is bounded. And uh, actually, this is more than a mark, if uh, no region is collapsing, actually the network is a tree. Because you can always shrink your neighborhood and, and uh, without collapsing, you only see a tree. And uh, as a consequence, if no region is collapsing, local, locally, no region is collapsing, locally the curvature is bounded. And this is, more, this is actually the, the converse of what we saw before, that if a region is collapsing, curvature cannot be bounded. In this case, if uh, the region is not collapsing, the curvature is bounded. That tells you that bounded curve, singularities with bounded curvature coincide exactly with this kind of vanish. And curvature with that bounded curvature coincide with the collapsing of a region. And now also this corollary can be clearly localized. And now we deal with the collapse of a region, the other family of singularities. So in this situation, we assume, so these two guys are equivalent after this uh, argument. So we have collapse of a region and unbounded curvature. One in, implies the other. So curvature is unbounded. And even if the one multiplicity one is true, again, you perform a blow procedure. What you find out that now you are no more in so nice situation that you can only find lines, infinite flat rods, so these guys composed by two lines crossing at 120 degrees, but now you find a lot of things. Because every shrinker is a flow by mean curvature. Think of this guy, suppose you have this guy, is flowing by mean curvature, is sh shrinking to a point and vanishing. If you do a blow up at the shrinking point, you find itself. So you really find these guys. For instance, this one and this one, the, or the bracket spoon or all these other. Possibly, you can imagine that if you fix this guy at the three end points on a, on a circle and let him evolve, you simply look, see him getting down to a triple, to a, to a tree, to a flat tree, or that flat irregular tree. So there are a lot. And classification, in order to understand the singularity, is important because of this, uh, because of this uh, reason. And clearly, the more your original network is easier, it's, it's, uh, from a structure point of view, the more you f can find a, a small number of these possible networks. Because, as, as I said, taking a limit to top the structure, the, top of the complexity of your network simplifies. Because maybe there are taking a limit up a blow-up limit means that you are enlarging things. So maybe some parts with higher complexity, you are sending them to infinity. So your complexity is getting, uh, is getting lower, actually. In the case, then there is a region collapsing. You, have, you see 
macroscopically your regions collapse and then you enlarge and what you actually uh, what actually happens is that in a way the two things compensate and your region you after the, the rescaling in the dynamical uh, procedure of Wisken, your region is always there, past the limit. You find it in the limit, and actually, in fact, uh, what you find in the limit, it's kind of, uh, it's the memory of the region which is collapsing down, that you don't see without the rescaling procedure. Because if you look at, thing, at things only without rescaling, you see this region going and you, if you're able to take a limit, in the limit, the region has gone. You have no idea how was the region, if it has uh, five or four uh, edges. You only see a point where the region has disappeared. Instead, the, in the, in the, shrink, the blow-up shrinker, limit shrinker, actually, when you see this region, it's uh, what actually collapses down. And also, if you find, if you, for instance, find something like, like this, suppose that this is free, for a shrinker, these three lines are unbounded. These three lines are, it gives you the limit tangents of the non-vanishing curves, which are the curves arriving at the region disappear. Suppose, for instance, you have something like this. And now, this region is disappearing. So what happens here is that these three curves are going to be something here, here, here. The region A collapsed inside this point. This is time T and this is time at the limit time. But uh, you take, to take the, the block procedure on this guy, what you see here is that uh, you get something like this. As a block shrinker. And, uh, the direction associated these three half lines are exactly equal to the direction you find in the limit. So the, the, the unbounded curves and unbounded half lines here give the direction of the limit tangent of the curves which are not vanishing and arrive on the region which is actually collapsing down. Okay, this is more or less what I said. Unfortunately, in this case with unbounded curvature, unbounded curv bounded curvature is very good because it gives you immediately compactness in C1. Here you, you have no control on the curvature, so you don't have C1 uh, compactness. And moreover, at the moment we are not able, it's a conjecture, to show that when you take the limit of this network to, to have something, when t goes to big T, you get something, but uh, actually we are not able to, to show that it's a unique guy. Like instead, uh, I was able to, to do before, because, before because of the argument about the Cauchy sequence, the bound on the velocity, in the case of bounded curvature. So this is, a, we don't know, and in fact, uh, at the moment, we let it, we conjecture it through that actually there is only a single guy that you can find out as a limit, but uh, it's a apparently hard open problem. Assuming such uniqueness, actually what can we prove that possibly after reparameterization, there is a vanishing part of the evolving network, in this case, these free curves bound in this region, that collapse to a point like this in this limit network S of t, and a non-vanishing part that actually converge in C1, actually, two curves that arrive, that concourse actually at this multipoint. Now we, here 
you find the triple, ju uh, triple junction only because the region here has, uh, has free edges, but see other examples. Do it here. And also in this situation, you are not guaranteed that this angle are 120. It can be whatever. And another example, suppose you have something like this. So you have one, two, three, four. And what you get is something Maybe something like this, with four curves. Depending on the number of curves arriving from on the region which is collapsing down. Far from the triple junction as before, because of local regularity, or Eckhart whisk can estimate for mean curvature flow, what you get is that uh, the, the convergence of this curve, if you are a little far from the triple junction here, it's actually C infinity, and the curves are C infinity. But uh, the best you can say about the curvature is that if you measure the distance of some point x here, well, let me call it p here, to the triple junction in arc length, well, the curvature here, it's a small o of the distance, of one over the distance. So getting close to the triple junction, to the, to the multiple junction that you get in the limit, the curvature can go to plus infinity. But not so much, smaller than one over the distance to the, to the multiple junction. This is a, qualitative, a quantitative very important estimate in this situation, and this is an example of uh, what can happen. This is a homothetic situation, uh, well, no, very, homo very special situation which is homothetic. And why I was uh, underlining these uh, this estimates? Because uh, actually the idea is that uh, when you assuming the uniqueness uh, conjecture, when you find out something like this, in the previous situation, the guy, in the situation with bounded curvature, the guy that we found as a limit of time big T was with bounded curvature. In this case, the curvature is not bounded. And if you look at the, at the theorem of Ilman and Eversch-Schultz, well, actually, I didn't write it uh, Clearly, actually, the, the, in, the, in the version which is up now published, or at least on archive, actually, you ask that your curve have bounded curves. So apparently, you are able to restart the flow in the situation of, the tr of a tree, but not in the situation where your curvature is as unbounded. Then, in a personal communication, and uh, without a written proof, but uh, I'm personally convinced and the argument should be there. In this theorem, you can have actually uh, put as an initial network something under this, uh, only this condition. So weakening a little bit the condition that are present in the paper on archive, where they ask uh, for bounded curvature or all the curve in order to have this bracket flow bracket flow that possibly up to now you saw the definition. Instead, the, you can push the, the proof in order to deal also with the case when the curvature has this kind of growth. So actually, it's an unpublished, uh, an unpublished proof of this, uh, of an extension of this theorem. You can actually restart the flow after this uh, after this uh, limit, S of big T, under the uniqueness condition, 
also for in the second situation of collapse of a region. Okay, so let me get back and uh, let me conclude, maybe a little bit early, with uh, a big picture of what we have done up to now that possibly resume everything that we've done. Kind of plan scheme. Okay, on this, here I put hypothesis on the singularity. Yeah, I put possible blow up. Okay, first case that I dealt with yesterday. The first case that we discussed it when uh, when on the singularity we assumed that all the length of the curve were bounded by some epsilon larger than zero uniformly and uh, we assumed also in order to get a contradiction that the, the supremum of the curvature, well, the curvature was bounded by some constant bounded at plus infinity. What we worked out that the possible blow up must be either empty or actually at a point where there is a singularity embedded every curve have infinite length and uh, regular, all, only triple junction and 110 degrees, only three points, 120 degrees. Uh, all of this under, let me write in red, Multiplicity one con con condition. Under M1, multiplicity one condition. Multiplicity one condition entered here, embeddedness of the limit. After you got this, what are the possible shrinker with all these? Uh, uh, qualities, all these properties, actually a line for the origin only, or, well, empty set, line for the origin, or infinite flat regular 
real. Only these two. Conclusion that we, we got at the end that no singularity at all was a contradiction conclusion, singularity. By means of white theorem, or the extension that we did with uh, well, Manovaga and Magni, or the, extension, the analogous extension of Ilmanen, Neves, and Schultz. K in this situation is bounded. So there is no singularity. K stays bounded, which actually was the idea to get a single to get this proof, you assume K was not bounded, you get a contradiction at the end. Second situation, now, <coughs> let me write it like this, inf of some curve is to zero, so some curve, the length of some curve goes to zero, and uh, curvature bounded. That uh, actually I call type zero singularity. Singularity with bounded curvature, type zero thing. Something that possibly I didn't say that in this situation of bounded curvature, all the length of the curves of the network converge to something. So not only the inf of some curve is, uh, is zero, but actually some curve, the length of, of at least one curve must go to zero, but really is going to, to vanish. So there is at least one curve such that Li goes to zero. What do we discover? We discover that what are the possible blow up must be the empty set as usual, embedded again. No curvature. Because since we are doing a rescaling, bounded curvature implies that the curvature in the limit is going to zero. which also means segments, because there is no curvature. They are what we call degenerate regular shrinkers. And uh, no regions, because uh, the argument that if you have bounded curvature, no region can collapse, so locally you are dealing with a tree with a region collapse, so in the limit you cannot have regions, because the limit is easier, it has less complexity than the approximating, so no regions. The generate means here that uh, you take a regular shrinker and possibly collapse some parts, some straight parts actually in this situation because we are dealing with straight segments. Okay, if now classify, if you forget about every part, forget about the part before, if you classify regular shrinkers with no composed only by segments, stray with no regions, uh, and uh, with this idea that if they hide something, which is that they are something that can vanish, you have, you have the same as before. Plus this guy. like we saw before. So there is only one more. 
in that situation. And the conclusion is that actually you always have k bounded by an argument similar to these ones. And uh, you can describe exactly what happens. So it's standard transition. This guy becomes two curves forming angles 120. And uh, moreover, also are isolated. So a collapse of, collapse of isolated curves. with bounded curvature. So this is ST and this is S big T. Final case, again, inf of length of some length fifth to zero and uh, K infinity unbounded. So which means that here we are dealing all together with type one and type two singularities. I didn't separate the two cases. Actually, we all have a conjecture, and when I say all, I say at least uh, me, Matteo Novaga, Alessandro Pluda, Felix Schultz, and Tom Manen, that uh, type two singularities for the motion of embedded networks are not there. They don't, they cannot be developed. Like the same for the motion of a single closed curve embedded. Type two singularities in, for curves in the plane can only appear if you consider the motion of immersed curve, possibly a curve like this, very possibly when this uh, loop will shrink, will develop a type two singularities. But this is only possible if your curve is uh, actually immersed, not embedded. So if we look at this guy, look at this situation, type one and two, because up to now it's a conjecture, only a conjecture, type two single. This is the last case we discussed. Again, non -em empty or embedded. Curvature non-zero. Regions around. Uh, again, they generate, so possibly there are some hidden part, regular shrink. And here, there can be a lot. And actually, as I said, and you can find on the survey that I uploaded uh, on the, as a material for the first lecture, there are several conjectures about, many of them coming from Tom Manen, about the, what, is, what can be in this class. Actually, the strongest conjecture that you can imagine is that this class is actually topologically fin finite. So the possible structures are actually finite. But anyway, there are a lot, and uh, there are, for sure they contain regions, a, number of, a finite number of regions, actually. And uh, again, also here we have, as usual, M1. Eh? Otherwise, the conclusion is not there. And again, conclusions, which is the last conclusion that uh, I show with you, under under the multiplicity, the uniqueness assumption, uniqueness of the limit. Again, let me also underline that uh, possible blow-ups here at the moment uh, non-unique. Again, you can uh, conjecture that the blow-up is unique, but even in the smooth case of mean curvature flow, in several cases, the problem of uniqueness of the blow-up in the rescaling, after the rescaling procedure, it's, it's still open. Also in this case, we conjecture that actually the possible blocks could be unique, but at the moment we are not able to prove it. So, for the moment, could be non-unique. 
Here instead we are asking, if you remember, uniqueness for the limit network when t goes to big t and the region is collapsing. In this situation you can have a lot of things, like a lot of things you can find here. So stuff like this, that uh, actually globally are only C1. Only C1, C infinity, far from, from, far from the, triple, the multiple junction, and with curvature O, small o, O1 over D. Also, let me mention another conjecture here that actually we don't believe too much this estimate in the sense that we actually hope that also in this situation K is bounded. This is not absolutely necessary for restarting the flow like I will uh, try to do tomorrow because uh, actually the theorem of Milman and Nemesis Schultz could be extended to this situation. So if we can also, in this situation, this case is clearly in the hypothesis of their theorem. This case apparently is not in the published version, in the public version on archive, but uh, in an unpublished version, you should be able to use the theorem also in this situation here. If you have this estimate on the grove, the curvature getting close to the multiple junction. Okay, just to conclude one minute, I hope that uh, apart with the analysis of the network for, flow, I hope I convince you of the, power, of the power of these techniques of using blow up in uh, uh, getting information on the, what happens but the blow-up tells you about something microscopically close to the singularity. But then what you really want to have information macroscopically on your flow. And you see that uh, at every step from information here you get information on the blow-up. Then here you are trying to use this information to classify and hopefully restrict, strongly restrict the possibility of the blow-up that you find out. Hoping that you are good enough in using this information to classify what appears here. And then once you classify, you use the microscopic information that gave you knowing what you can find to get some conclusion on the macroscopic behavior of your flow. This it's a very good scheme in general outside the network flow for mean curvature flow, Ricci flow, network flow or other kind of flows you can have in mind. Possibly in other situations we have different way to do blow up, uh, different way to do classification that usually this part it's usually where the geometry enters. You use the geometry in order to classify the object that has these properties and uh, write them, fill the, the holes here and hope that there are not too many when they are too many, like here, you see it's quite clear. The less things you find here, the more you are precise in the conclusion here. This is more or less the philosophical uh, message behind this uh, scheme of, of work. Okay, I think I can conclude here, and uh, see you tomorrow.